Hey guys, it's Patrick with fstoppers.com and today I'm talking really quietly because I don't want to wake up my new board. I'm trying to get some great photos of him. Son of a <laughs> This video is sponsored by Datacolor and their brand new Spider Checker Photo. The Spider Checker Photo guarantees that you get the most accurate colors in your photographs no matter which camera, lens, or digital sensor you use. This state-of-the-art target card references over 62 color targets and four interchangeable cards, including 24 standard colors, six skin tones, and a grayscale consisting of 24 tonal steps. Once a test image is captured using the Spider Checker, simply edit your raw file using your favorite photo editor like Photoshop, Lightroom, or Hasselblad Focus, and the Spider Checker software will automatically autocorrect your colors by creating and applying an HSL preset. What makes the Spider Checker photo so unique is that it's large enough to be useful on a wide range of photographic locations, it's small and compact enough to store in your camera bag, and the rigid case guarantees that the colors will never scratch or fade during storage. If you photograph landscapes, product photography, portraits, or architecture and want perfect color every single time, click the link in the description below to check out the brand new Spider Checker Photo by Datacolor. Alright guys, so I have to admit, taking newborn photography is not my specialty. I've really only done it once or twice. I recently shot my sister's twin boys. You can see that picture here. And while this one image does look pretty cool, it was a total pain in the butt trying to get the kids in the studio and get them organized and they're waking up and they're crying and peeing everywhere. It was a total disaster. It's going well. Just get them to hug and hold each other's hands. <laughs> Yeah, just like that. Just like that. There we go. That's what we need. And so I thought, I really want to capture my son before he gets too old. I want to get those like detail shots of his hands and feet and all that cute stuff. But I don't want to have to deal with moving him when he's sleeping and taking him back to the studio. Now, traditional baby photography is typically kind of stylized and the kids are all, you know, wrapped up and swaddled or they're sitting on their stomachs and they got the, the pretty hat and all the stuff's perfectly manicured and designed. I think those photos look a little cheesy and they're kind of overdone. I feel like every baby photo looks like that. So the goal that I have today is to try to take more fine art images or detail shots that I could print large and hang in his room. And they're not going to be those cutesy Etsy looking photos. They're going to look a little bit more timeless perhaps. And so my thought was instead of moving him into the studio and trying to do this whole set, perhaps I could just shoot him right here and get it all done in his pack and play or in his crib. Now, one of the first challenges that you're gonna deal with if you take this kind of photography is, what type of lighting do you wanna use? In most cases, soft and natural light is probably your best option. But as you can see in this room, we have these huge bay windows here, but if I look at the baby in the crib, the light's not really in the best place. And so if you're a natural light photographer, you're probably used to moving your subject to the perfect position. The last thing I wanna do is try to lift him up and move him to where the natural light is perfect. And then it's also kind of late in the day and I, I assume this natural light's gonna be gone. So what I wanna do is I wanna produce my own light. Now what I have over here is a Profoto B10X. Of course, you can use any kind of strobe you want. And I also have a grid on here, and the idea is that I kind of want to make the light a little tighter. I don't want to light up the whole room. But basically what I want to do is move this light around his crib. And the theory is, hopefully I can bounce the light off the ceiling and produce really soft light, or I could turn the head and fire across his crib and maybe get some real directional hard light. It's going to allow me to basically move my light source right here, which is really easy to move around the room, and not have to deal with moving the baby. Now, I have been taking a few of these photos throughout the week, so this isn't the first time I've taken these photos, but one thing that I found really helpful, especially in this room, is using a piece of foam core. And with this, I can position this in his crib and around different parts of his body, and I can bounce the light into this, which is going to give the appearance of soft natural light. But unlike the light that's 10 feet away, I can use this to mimic natural light. And just by moving this around, I can get the light right off to the side. I can put it over him as fill light, overhead light. Basically, this gives me a ton of flexibility when it comes to the direction of the light. All right, the second thing that I'm doing that might be a little bit different is I'm using a 60 millimeter macro lens. And my thought here is that I wanna get some really interesting shots where maybe it's just part of his hands or part of his face or his cheeks or hair or nose or eyes. And I wanna be able to get really, really close, much closer than what a normal lens would allow. And I don't wanna to have to crop it all and lose megapixels. So the 60 millimeter macro lens is great for this because I can focus 
literally inches away and still get a really nice sharp image. Recently, we did a macro photography tutorial that's in our store. You can check that out in the link in the description below. And one thing that I learned with macro photography is that unlike portraits where you're gonna be shooting wide open at 2.8 to get all that shallow depth of field, with macro photography, many cases, I'm gonna be setting the aperture down to F45, F50. Yes, I might get some diffraction in my images, but I'm going to also get a lot more depth of field. So when you're shooting with a lens that does macro settings at F30 to 60, you're gonna lose a ton of your natural light anyway. So that's the second advantage of using a strobe is this is way more powerful than the natural light that's coming in this room. So instead of having to set my ISO up to ISO 6400, 5000, 10,000, just to get the correct exposure, I can now set my aperture really low, but then use the strobe to get enough light to produce those really clean, low ISO images. Now, depending on where you're shooting these images, you might be in your child's nursery you might have the whole room pure white and it's gonna be really easy to bounce light off of any of the walls, which gives you a lot of flexibility and maybe you don't even need the piece of foam core. But as you can see in this room, all of our walls are blue. So if I bounce this light really close to his crib, like right behind him, I'm gonna get some really bad color casts. So depending on the color of your room, you might be able just to bounce light and get some really nice side and directional lighting, or if you're in a room like this where you're gonna get these horrible color casts, you're really gonna to wanna to use the foam core. So basically the settings I have here, I'm shooting at one over 200th of a second. That's kind of this camera's sync speed. I'm gonna be playing around with the depth of field and shooting at F18, maybe all the way up to F57 on this lens. If I want super shallow depth of field, I could go down to F5, but I'm gonna have a really hard time focusing because at that depth of field, it's literally gonna be like a sheet of paper. It's gonna be so razor thin. For these shots, I think I'm gonna be shooting with a much more stopped down lens in general. All right, so my goal is not to lift him up and move him into the studio, but one thing I do wanna do is I don't wanna capture all of this baby clothing stuff. So what I wanna to try to do is lift him up and use like a black t-shirt or something, put it under him, and then that way when I shoot his hands and sides of his face, he's against black, which is going to make these look a little bit more artsy. One thing that's really nice about using a mirrorless camera, this is the Nikon Z7, is that you can use the back of the screen and it's gonna make changing your focus a lot easier. On these macro lenses, I'm gonna manually focus because it's just so hard for this to grab autofocus. So if I come in here, I can get really close, make sure I don't get too close to touch the baby. And as you can see here, I can just rack the focus and I can so easily see the focus on the back of the screen. So you can see, I can get some really cool looking shots that are really close, but I think the key to this is getting really interesting lighting. Right now, the light's just bouncing up on the ceiling. It's coming down. It's really, really soft, but it's extremely boring. I mean, this almost looks like a, a medical shot of an ear. It doesn't look cool at all. So what I wanna do is try to change the direction of the light. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this foam core really close to him now I've found when I'm trying to do these little lighting setups, having a grid on your lights is really important because I can get the light really close to the baby, but because the grid is only gonna let it fire straight across into this foam core, it's gonna prevent the light from spilling down on him. So I think now that I have the light much closer, but off to the side, it's gonna look a lot better. Let's try to take this next photo there. I don't wanna block the light with my hand. All right, so if we now look at this picture, I think this looks a little more artsy, where the previous image that had less directionality, it almost looks too bright, it's kind of sterile, it almost looks clinical. All right, so now that he's moved his face, I can't really get the shot of the ear, but his face looks really good. So what I'm gonna do without moving the light, I'm gonna move this piece of foam core right in front of him. And now when the light hits this foam core, it's almost gonna act like a huge softbox is right in front of his face. Let's see if this shot could work. This macro lens lets me get incredibly close. I'm actually gonna to try to just angle this and get some cool shots of his lips. If you find that the light is too soft and everything's just being lit up and really bright and that's not the mood you're going for, you can also try to move the foam core and just put the light a little further away and use it just as a hard light skimming across the whole scene. You might actually be surprised by some of the lighting that you get using a hard light like this. This is so hard. Now he's waking up. 
So when they wake up, you know it's pretty much time to just call it quits. Hudson, you want to make your first YouTube appearance? You don't like YouTube? You want your own channel. <laughs> He's not going to get his own channel yet, but my suggestion is to have fun with it. Don't get frustrated. Don't feel like you got to overwork yourself or overwork the baby. And if you can, if your wife allows it, keep some of this photo gear around the crib and just take, you know, a few days and get the pictures that you want. Go put them on a screen. Make sure they look like what you want to capture. And you're going to be learning something through the whole process. Working with babies and animals is probably the most difficult thing you could possibly photograph. And if you really get frustrated and you want those classic images of them with all their perfect outfit and the perfect pose where they look like little peas in a pod, maybe you just hire a real baby photographer and leave this to the professionals. All right, so baby is getting fed off to the side. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Also go to fstoppers.com where we have daily articles. And if you want to learn from some of the best photographers in the world, we have a really extensive video library of full tutorials from some of the world's best photographers, ranging on all different types of genres from landscape, swimwear, beauty, fashion, portraiture, architecture, literally anything you can imagine. Head over to fstoppers.com slash store. You can take advantage of our 15% discount code. In the meantime, I'm going to go try to look at these images and get some rest. Being a new parent is not the easiest thing in the world. And I now have a newfound respect for all of you fathers and mothers out there, this is pretty, pretty difficult.